below two degrees, probably most things are okay. Not necessarily the reef, but lots of other things. Above two degrees, it starts to get really pretty dicey. So the UNFCCC, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, has a specific clause in it that says we've got to try and avoid two degrees. The really big step forward since that time is a type of modelling called carbon budgets, and some of you will know about this. But basically it's about working out, okay, to avoid, to avoid two degrees or to at least have a, say, a 75% chance of not getting to two degrees or not going above it, how much, carbon, how much more carbon dioxide can we put into the atmosphere? And they've worked out that between the year 2000 and the year 2050, you can put in about a thousand billion tonnes of carbon dioxide to have a 75% chance of not going over two degrees. Now, a thousand billion tonnes sounds like an awful lot of carbon dioxide, and indeed it is. The problem is, in 2013, we were 40% of the way there. So by 2013, we'd put out 400 billion, and at present rate of output, we'll get there to the thousand billion in 2028. So that means that we'll have spent our budget by 2028 and we've then got another 22 years before the 2050 where we can't spend anything. And, and one of the, to add to that, one of the big problems is if all of the fossil fuel reserves that are already owned by oil and gas companies around the world and coal companies are burnt, we will by far exceed that carbon budget. In fact, so, we can only spend, we can only burn 20% of known fossil fuel reserves. So it's 80% of all the coal and oil and shale oil and all that sort of stuff. And none of the tar sands, basically. And nothing people are looking for as well. Uh, yeah, nothing know? people are looking for. Yeah, no, no, the conventional gas either. Yeah. So, yeah. Does that factor in the methane being emitted okay, into well, the atmosphere? Methane's an interesting character. So methane is in much smaller quantities. So we measure <laughs> methane in the atmosphere in parts per billion rather than parts per million. The problem with methane is that it's around somewhere between, depending on which textbook you read, 22 and 25 times more effective per molecule uh, for, of warming than carbon dioxide. So one of the, the really scary things about climate change, this is the thing that keeps me awake at night, is the concept of a positive feedback. So if you think about the permafrost um, in the, up in the tundra, the permafrost has a lot of carbon <coughs> in it, carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and methane and all sorts of other things. As, as it warms up, the permafrost is melting, and so all of that is decomposing then because it's not frozen anymore and releasing more carbon to the atmosphere in the form of either methane or carbon dioxide. And then that's producing more warming, which is melting more permafrost, etc. And that's what a positive feedback yep. is. So the really scary thing about uh, what people are talking about tipping points in the climate system is that what we don't, we really don't know where the tipping point will occur where there'll be a runaway climate change because of these positive feedbacks, which is not adaptable to at all. And we get basically a planet that life as we know it can't exist on. Now, we don't know if that will occur at two degrees. Hopefully not. Probably not. It might occur at four degrees. It might occur at six degrees or ten degrees. Yeah. But the point is we don't know. So we really have to kind of... Place. So and how does the methane factor into the... 100, into the... Um, into the amount of carbon dioxide that can be emitted. So that, so when that's extra. So that's extra. So that's you know, yeah. so if we, so we will probably exceed that two degrees of warming. Climate scientists that I know, and I don't, I don't, even though I often get introduced as a climate scientist, I, I like to talk about myself as a climate change scientist because I'm yep. actually an ecologist rather than climatologist. But my, I know a lot of climate scientists, and virtually none of them think we'll keep to two degrees. You know, so four yeah. degrees. The World Bank put out a report last year, <coughs> the year before, on, on a four degree world and what that meant. So I think four degrees by the second half of this century is a much more likely prospect for two degrees. It would be great if we could keep to two degrees. Hi, I'm Malcolm Ailes, founder of the Climate Warrior Program, and I'd now like to discuss with you uh, the discussion that we just saw uh, myself having with Professor Leslie Hughes, um, lead IPCC author. First of all, she was quite clear about our need to limit warming to a maximum of two degrees Celsius to avoid, avoid a climate catastrophe. 
Second, she highlighted that at the current rates of emissions, we're going to use up our entire climate budget by 2028. Third, when questioned, um, she stated that the carbon budget does not allow for methane and that most climate scientists believe we cannot avoid warming of four degrees Celsius. And finally, fourth, we are not sure when we will pass a tipping point that leads to runaway climate change that we simply can't survive. To give our children and future generations a world that we'd like to leave them, a world that isn't a climate catastrophe, we need to limit uh, the warming to a maximum of two degrees Celsius. We're, using, we're rapidly using up the carbon budget that is designed to allow us to keep within that range of warming, and we're going to have used it up by 2028. Even so, even with that carbon budget, most climate scientists believe we cannot avoid warming of four degrees Celsius. Most climate scientists are telling us, in fact, that we are going to have a climate catastrophe. Now, not only that, we're heading towards a point where we could get runaway climate change especially due to methane emissions and carbon emissions from thawing permafrost in the Arctic. Look at the signs of what's happening in the Arctic, that there is a significant possibility that we're starting to get close to those points now. And yet, at the same time, we have political inaction. Um, despite having numerous climate conferences um, there is no world agreement. Emissions are still rising. There's no agreement on how we will reduce our emissions to get within our budget, which we're going to use up by 2028. Most countries aren't planning anything that remotely resembles um, you, keeping within the budget that may give us a chance of getting to two degrees Celsius of warming. If we're going to give our children a fighting chance, we need to draw a line in the sand. We need to draw a line now. We need to set an end date for the burning of fossil fuels. First of all, we need to set an end date for the burning of coal, gas, for the production of electricity, which is where the majority of our current emissions come from. Whatever end date we set prior to 2028 is going to be enormously difficult to meet. There's no question about that. The question is, do we set ourselves a difficult task or do we set our children an impossible task? That's the question. There is no, there is no easy answer. The question is, do we do some hard work or... Do we make our children, our grandchildren, future generations do the impossible? 2025, if we are still burning fossil fuels to produce electricity past 2025, we've made a choice. We've chosen to not give our children a fighting chance. We've chosen to set them an impossible task. We've chosen not to do the work ourselves. That is the choice.